Amen. Deception is so strong right now that if you don't have an anchor in the word, you're going to fly off. You're going to float off, boy. There's too many philosophies to get involved in now because everybody's a God. So every, everybody's a God and every God has their own doctrine. So people have their own philosophies about, about God and their life. So you have, you have to have an anchor in the word of God. Amen. Say an anchor. Amen. That anchor means, what is an anchor for? It keeps you from flying off. Keeps you from floating away. Keeps you, yeah, stable, solid. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And uh, that's what we need in this last hour because the, the, the mark of the last, look, look over to Matthew 24 real quick. Let me go there first. Give you some foundational scripture. Hallelujah. Amen. The mark of the last days is deception. Say deception. deception. Amen. The mark of the last days is deception. This is why Jesus continued to tell his disciples about deception. Because deception would be would, this mass deception too. Not just, not just uh, 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 individual deception but how the masses would be deceived. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so what I'm really going to get into uh, is going to, it's called um, um, end time or new world order programming. In other words, we're programmed to accept things that we don't really realize it. Amen? We're going to talk about that. But look at Matthew 24, verse 11. You all there? Amen. It says, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And then he's talking about when the disciples asked Jesus about the signs of his coming. He said, Many false prophets will, will rise and they will deceive many. Are y'all there? Another scripture says that, that, that even the very elect might be deceived. Y'all, are y'all understanding what I'm saying? That means those who was living right, trying to serve the Lord, could possibly be deceived. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I really believe we're further in the book of Revelations than preachers are preaching. It, preaching of Revelations doesn't, doesn't preach well. Because it causes people to realize that what we are trusting in is going to be gone in, at some point. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so because we are in, because it doesn't preach well, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, it doesn't, um, it doesn't give people a sense of uh, security that people preach and stay away from it. That's why you can hear 20 sermons on prosperity and 100 sermons on uh, 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 gifts and those things that make people excited. But you hear very little on hell and judgment. And uh, y'all hear what I'm saying? And, uh, and so that's why most Christians don't even under, have no clue about what Re the book of Revelation is about. Because they never heard it ministered on. They've never, if they did hear it, they took one scripture out of it to prove something that didn't have nothing to do with Revelations. But the whole point is we are in the end of the book. We are in this last book, and it's funny how the more we get closer to Christ coming, the less people are talking about this last book. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the Bible says that the sign of these last days is false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Say many. So that's mass deception. Say mass deception. Now this is not something that's going that happens uh, 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 on a on a individual level. This is like something that the whole world. The Bible says that when the Antichrist reveals himself, the whole world will follow him. The whole world will be deceived by him. As a matter of fact, he is a great deceiver. His job is to deceive. So. He's setting up a system of deception. Before he, he's not going to pop up without him already having a system of deception in place. So he's deceiving you now. You don't have to see the Antichrist to be deceived by him. You're deceived by the system he's setting up because he's going to take over a system. A, he's going to take over a kingdom that was given to him by men who have pledged their allegiance to Lucifer. Say amen. For the riches and control of this world, once they bring, once they get this world in the chaotic condition that Satan or darkness needs to manifest in, they will give their power to the beast, which is what the Bible says. Are uh, y'all there or not there? 
So we, so what we see in society is everything is going towards darkness. Everything is going. Matter of fact, it's getting so bad that right is wrong. Amen. Right is now wrong. What was once considered right in your conscience is now wrong. Why? Because in order for Satan to come, it has to be chaos. In order for the Bible says the son of perdition to come, there must be a great falling away. That means people who once believed in this gospel have to fall away. And we see this great falling away now. Churches are falling, whole denominations are falling away. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Why? Because the system, the stage has to be set for this beast to come, this, this antichrist to come. He can't come as long as there's so much light. He has to persecute this light until there's almost utter darkness. So people will be in darkness. When people are in darkness, they will receive any light, even if it's fake. Y'all, they're not there. So he's using his weapons. The Bible says Satan is the prince and power of the airway. Say the air. He's the prince and power of communication. Airways mean communication. That means however you receive communication, whether it be TV, which is the number one thing. Now the internet is the number one thing. Books, anything that you receive communication from, Satan is behind it. That's the reason why these big companies are buying up everything. Big companies are buying up other companies. A, 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 a Time Warner is getting bought up by Comcast. Everybody's trying to buy up because at the top of these companies are men who are part of an elite group. Y'all want me to get into this or not? Are part of an elite group that are basically in basically are chosen to create this to create the, the atmosphere for this son of perdition or the antichrist to show up in. Are y'all there? This is why everything you see in media is always negative and it's it's hypersexual, and you have to almost be on pills to understand it. A normal-minded person looks at some of this stuff and say, "This don't even make sense." But they, have, but because they have dumbed down and ridlinized, if that's even the word, ridlinized this generation, that they understand this this, this foolishness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are y'all there? Let me let me take you here for a second because I want to give you some foundation. The way this chosen group communicate is the same way they communicated in Egypt and Babylon. When you see the hieroglyphs of Egypt, those symbols were words, they meant something. It's a language. Y'all got what I'm saying? It's a symbol language that you don't need to speak. You can just see the symbol and you know what it means. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the way that this group speaks, they could be Freemasons, they could be Illuminati, you can name a whole lot of them, they're all under the same thing. But the way they speak, they speak through symbols. Because symbols, because if you're not a part of their order, you don't see the symbol. It means nothing to you. But they understand when they see the symbol. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Like the symbol, let's, let's, let's use the eye in the pyramid. Well, they know what that symbol means. On the back of your dollar, there's the symbol right there. Now, to, now, all your life, even as a child, you looked at that and didn't know what it meant. It looked weird. It was a little scary when I first saw it when I was little. I knew it had some significance, but I didn't understand it. As I began to study, as I got older, I found out that that, that, that pyramid is an unfinished pyramid, and the base of that pyramid is, the, is these committees and groups that are all... Are all creating uh, that are all using this 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 super listen to me this supernatural knowledge that they've gotten from darkness to build this platform so the all seeing eye or the enlightened one which they call Lucifer which is now Satan can come and set on that pyramid. The Bible said calls him the beast that these kings give their power to the beast. So they're building a system. That's what that pyramid on the back of your dollar is. America was chosen for, America was chosen to, to be the land, let me tell you, of the Antichrist. Amen. Now, if you go back and study in American history, the, they, they keep trying to make the founding fathers Christian. And that's a lie. Because if you study it, they were deist. 
Many of them were part of the Hellfire Club, which was just a pedophile ring. Benjamin Franklin and them, they was part of that Hellfire Club where they went under the ground and had sex with kids. See, we don't know that stuff. But they made them Christian because they always whitewashed history to make it look good. Looking back on it, it looks good. Okay, let me, let me help you. The truth gets swallowed up in revisionism. Now, what do I mean by that? If you ever study, let me just give you, let me give you something real quick. If you've ever studied 9-11, just say 9-11, just, 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 just study 9-11. And these planes that flew into the building. <laughs> if you study this out, you know, if you look at all that, there ain't no possible way that could have happened. I know you, but there ain't no possible way. Steel, airplane fuel cannot melt steel. No matter what you say, that building would have never failed. If it would have failed, it would have fell over. It wouldn't have fell down like an explode, like a demolition. Ain't no way it happened. Come on. But because of this predictable programming, you had they, they say the same thing over and over and over till what you keep hearing becomes the official story. Come on. Even though your eyes can see. Even though your mind knows, even though experts will tell you, demolition experts say no building can ever fall like that. But we still believe that the greatest defense system in the world, nine, nine cats with box cutters, when we can't get nowhere near a plane, can get on a plane and take it over. But we believe that's the official story. Why? That's what we were told over and over and over. Now, the unofficial story is that that couldn't have happened that way. But we're not told that over and over. So that sounds foreign. We've been conditioned to believe that the lie of that. Because in reality, are y'all there? In reality, they saw, that if you really study it, didn't no plane even hit the Pentagon. I'm trying to show you how we're bewitched. There was no plane there. You remember the flight that went down in Pennsylvania? There was no parts of a plane. It was a hole in the ground with no parts. Now, that was a plane that just crashed over in Malaysia, over, over the Ukraine, right? If you, did you see the plane crash? Was it a plane there? What happened to the plane in, that, 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 that crashed that went off course in, 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 I think it was in Pennsylvania? It was a hole in the ground with no debris, no engine. Nothing just disintegrates. The Pentagon had a hole about this big, and they found out it was a missile that did it. But the official story was, the official story is that, what was it, nine or 12 hijackers with box cutters took three planes and flew them into, took over the greatest defense system in the world that did you know within five minutes a, 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 a jet, a, a fighter jet can be anywhere in this country. But these planes went off course for almost 30 minutes and no jet came. Come on, y'all got this. Uh, now, now, now I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to even get into that. I'm trying to show you how something that doesn't make sense has become your truth. That when we talk about it, you hear the same story over. That's, listen to me, that's called predictive programming. Are y'all there? Let me show you some other things because we're, it's happening to us all the time. We don't see it. It's a, it's a known fact that Hollywood has always been in the bed with the Defense Department. Yeah. Hollywood always and the Defense Department go hand in hand because the Defense Department likes to make, they like the weapons and the movies about the weapons because it conditions the people for war. It conditions the people for war. This is the reason why you think there is a real, there is a real battle with Jews and Arabs, you think that, but it really wasn't that. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So Hollywood puts out movies to condition you to agree with an agenda down the road. Case in point, they, The Hunger Games. The Hunger Games is a movie that's conditioning people to accept elite control. That's what that movie was about that they're gonna be a peasant class and they're gonna be a ruling class. 
and you've been conditioned through all of these latest movies, this, this dystopian future where it's an elite class ruling and there's a peasant class. That's all you see in these movies lately. Why? Because there's programming you to accept this. Because this is the will of the new world order. This is the will of the, of the elite. They want you to accept the fact that you're going to be a peasant in the future. Now this goes along with the Bible because they're creating a system where the Bible says you can't buy or sell except you have that mark in your hand or your forehead. They're even conditioning you to accept the mark. That's why people are getting tattoos now on their foreheads and in places where they wasn't getting them. I don't care what they're getting. They're getting them there. It's conditioning. It don't matter what. It don't matter what it is. It's the fact that they're putting stuff in their forehead and on their hand, right hand. They're being conditioned for these marks. Are y'all there? If I go off a step, let me go off a step because I had somebody upset with me about this tattoo situation. I explained, I got a video about it, and I was explaining where it comes from. But if I take you a step deeper, <laughs> y'all gonna get, y'all be getting mad at me, then y'all be, y'all be covering up your tattoo like I'm. Look, I don't look. You do a lot of things when you're ignorant. Ignorance, you do. That's why the. See, if you knew the Bible, you know the Bible says don't mark in your flesh. Why? Because that's what heathens or pagans do to worship demons. That's how they worship their gods, through marking in the flesh. Why? Because demons are marked up. And the, and, the, and the job of a demon is to get a mark in you. A mark in you, a mark in you is, a, is a sign of ownership. That's why slaves are always marked. So God said, don't put no mark in your flesh because don't nobody own you but me. And I don't have a mark on your flesh. I have a mark in your heart. The first mark that men started to receive from God was circumcision. Right? Through Abraham. But in the New Testament, Paul said, no, we don't need that because you can be circumcised and still be a sinner. He said, the, 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 the new mark is, I'm going to cut that foreskin of your heart. I'm going to deal with. So that's, the, that's how you know I'm saved. It's that mark in my spirit. Any other mark, this, it's a mark in my flesh, and it describes only. It don't matter whether you can have a baby, an angel, it don't matter. Now, people get mad because we live in a generation that, you know, do what you want to do, and the church has now sanctified this. And saying everything's okay, and 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 how in the, how in the world that we're saved now, looking like everybody else, it don't, it don't work. We can't look like everybody else. Uh, so I made y'all mad about that. I made y'all mad about that, but y'all know I don't care. You, I'm trying to show you that you're doing. Let's go one step further. Did you know when you put a mark on your body, you hold yourself at that place spiritually? You held there. You put somebody's name on you, you held at that, at that place. Nobody has on care if it's the name of mama. Nobody has ownership of you. Now, when you ask, if you didn't know no better, just pray. God will forgive you and go on. But now we're trying to make it right. Instead of saying, no, the Bible said don't put a mark in your flesh because you do it for the dead. That's why how pagans worship their they're, they're demons as far as they put a mark in their body. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And if you and, and if I can go one step further, if you've ever seen a real demon, you know demons are marked. They scratch all up, scratch all the way up. And that's what they try to make people look like. That's why people can't just get one today, just look like walking devil. And let me ask you this. Why is it the worst stuff people get on their body? Why you need a skull coming out of a fire snake? <laughs> Why, why? I don't need that. A skull coming out of a fire snake. Why can't I have something good on my body? Now, y'all hear what I'm saying? And even the good stuff is just wicker. It's just white witchcraft. The symbols are still witchcraft. Uh, I thought I'm going to give you that because it's a bewitching hour. And everything the world is doing, the church is trying to do and sanctify. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Trying to help us. Okay. Let me give you a little bit more here. So, the last days are all about programming. 
getting man to accept this system that causes him to be ruled. This is the, this is the goal of Satan from the beginning, to rule the earth again. That's what, that's what he was doing before. That's what he wants to do again. He wants to rule man. Not only does he want to really rule man, he wants man to worship him in God's face. That is his greatest that is his greatest uh, uh, that's his greatest slap in God's face is that he can get God's creation to worship him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the Bible says that once the Antichrist shows up, this man will be possessed by Satan himself. He will go in the temple in Jerusalem and he will, and he will claim himself to be God. And he will tell everybody, you're going to fall down and worship me. Are y'all there? So we are, so every, so, so now I told you that, 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 oh, oh, so many things here. You know how the Bible has prophecies, right? God has prophets and prophecies, and he gets his prophets or men and women of God to proclaim his word, what's coming, and people either hear it or they don't, right? Well, Satan doesn't have men and women like God because God's men and women are holy and they can. And when they say something, they, it, it's coming from the Lord and the Lord will do it. What Satan has, he has a prophetic machine called Hollywood that, 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 that predicts the future through movies. What they're doing is they're not predicting the future. They're getting you to get in agreement by showing you something over and over so you'll agree with the future. Listen to me. He's showing you something over and over so you'll agree with it. Amen. Your agreement is what brings it. Amen. If Satan could take over, he would take over. He can't take over. He needs man to be in agreement with him. So, he keeps show, so he's programming you to keep showing you the same stuff over and over again. That's why every movie you see got to do with something coming in the future, some big event, some nuclear war, some crazy event, and all of a sudden we go into this dystopian future, some zombie movie. That's all you see him. He's getting you in agreement with it. That's, he's using Hollywood as prophet. They're putting out prophetic messages through movies. Can, can, can we get this? Can, can we understand? Let me help y'all. You can go back and search, research this. I ain't going to go real deep in it. Before 9 11 happened, it, it, uh, uh, a lot of movies was pointing to 9 11. Kept putting 9 11, 9 11, 9 11. A lot of movies kept. Matter of fact, there was one movie that actually said the plot. The terrorists going to fly planes into the building. This was put out by Hollywood. You say, why would Satan do that? Because Satan, he loves to brag. He loves to brag. The same way that God says, what I say will come to pass. Satan wants that same way where he says, what well, I'm going to show y'all what I'm going to do, and y'all's too dumb to see it, and I'm going to do it in your face. So he's not hiding. This stuff is in plain sight. I told you he's using symbols that only those who understand this stuff can even see what's happening. Is this okay? Let's go deeper. Can we go deeper? I'm trying to cram in a whole lot of research within a little bit of a few minutes. But I'm trying to help you about this new world. You got to understand this new world order. You got to understand something's coming. Please know that. Something's coming. Why don't you know that? Because you're not conditioned to know it. You're not conditioned to see. No, I'm talking about bad. You're not really conditioned for that to happen. Because the people who's supposed to be teaching us, teaching us, are not teaching us that. So, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So we're not prepared for that. Because we don't see that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say, something's coming. Now, if you get beyond CNN and, M and NBC and Fox News, which is owned by, so crazy, I don't even understand how people don't get this. The media is owned by the people who's at the top. <laughs> These people are the elite people. They, they own all the media. That's why you're only getting one message. If I had time to break it down, I, would, I could really pinpoint it and show you who's actually over this stuff, but... You know, I ain't got time to go through it all because if you say this, you have to take people all the way to, uh, so they understand because people get religious when you start talking about stuff that they don't understand. But the media, all the media is owned by five people. All five people are Jews. They own all the media. 
five people own all the media. Every song, record, every movie, every movie company, every newspaper, news show, it's five people own it. All of them are the same ethnicity. Why is this important? Because if I own the media, I'm never going to report about me. So all you have to do is to say, who don't I see on TV? What am, what am I not seeing on TV? Because that's why you think, that's why we think we as blacks are so bad, because we're always on TV. We're always in front of the camera doing something ignorant. Who's on TV not looking ignorant? Those are usually the people that control it. Because if I own TV, you think I'm going to make myself look bad? Amen. No, I'm going to make myself look good. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. I was telling y'all Wednesday about that Palestinian, uh, Israeli-Palestinian situation over in Gaza where the Palestinians are firing rockets on Israel. And the news is saying the Palestinians done fired 100 some rockets on Israel. What they're not talking about is nobody died. But they're really not talking about Israel killing hundreds of them with bombing campaigns. Why? Because who owns the news? So we're being programmed to cheer for something. We don't even see that as another side. Children are dying and everything. But we're cheering for this because we're being programmed to see one side of this conflict. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? I'm trying to show you how you're already part of this. You're already being programmed. Are you there? The Bible says that, that this man of sin, this Antichrist, when he, when he shows up, he is going to cause everybody, small and great, you won't be able to eat, you won't be able to buy, you won't be able to sell nothing. Y'all there? Y'all know this, you being pro, let me give you another program, this illegal alien situation, where they don't open the borders and, and busting these cats in from Mexico, and y'all think, oh, they, everybody just want to come to America, have a good time in America, and you, you ignorant, you don't understand, and you ain't got no job. How you going to give jobs to somebody, we ain't got no job, we ain't got no money. How you going to help somebody, we ain't got nothing. You help yourself. You got to help yourself first. Y'all heard what I'm saying? But they busting these cats in, and people don't understand what they're doing. But, but they're, 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 they're destroying the system because the system's already in debt. We're already in debt. We don't have no money here. America is broke. Not just broke, but old folk. I mean, we are in, we, this debt we're in, we'll never get out of it. It's going to take a world war to, to cancel this debt. That's what you don't see. Let's, let's talk a little more. Remember Gaddafi? Well, let's, let's, let's go before Gaddafi. Remember Saddam? What did the media tell you? I'm, you was programmed, I'm going to show you. What did the media tell you about Saddam? He's, a, he's killing his people. He gas. He he's put these biological weapons on these people. He got weapons of mass destruction. Come on, talk to me. Now, that's what they told you. But the real thing was Saddam was about ready to start trading oil for euros. What does that mean? America has the oil currency. What does that mean? In order for you to buy oil, any country, you cannot, that country cannot just take their money and buy oil. They have to first buy dollars. Come on, I'm going to give you the whole thing about what this war stuff is about. They got to first buy dollars. So let's say China, uh, what, what is Japanese? Yen? Japanese yen. Now, uh, ja Japan can't just take their yen and go to the Middle East and buy oil from Saudi Arabia right. with their yen. Because right. America has put itself up as the, as, as the, as the money police. Right. Y'all got what I'm saying? Yeah. So the Japan has to come to America, buy our dollars, trade their money in for our money. You see what I'm saying? And then they got to go, then they go buy oil. Right. Right. You can't sell oil but in dollars. Now, we don't even know this, but this is what all the wars are about. Saddam decided, I'm tired of America, imperialism. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start selling my oil. And it was his oil. I'm going to sell my oil for euros. I'm going to cut out the middle America man and go straight to the Europeans. They said, oh, you're going to do that? Oh, he got weapons of mass destruction. They destroyed that country because he decided he was going to get out of the dollar business. That was the real cause. You were, now did you know that? No. What was you? What was the media conditions you to think? Man, it was a mass destruction. 
I'm trying to show you how this new world order is already, we already believe in it. We're already being manipulated. Y'all there? If you remember Gaddafi, they, they, why do they always say the same thing about all these dictators? They're killing their people. They, 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 they're using weapons of mass destruction. They got biological weapons. They said that about Gaddafi. What they didn't say was Gaddafi stood up at the UN and said, look, I'm getting ready to make, create a new currency for Africa. It's going to be backed by the billions of dollars that Gaddafi had in gold. Wow. And he was about ready to change Africa, where Africa would no longer have to fool with, with dollars. Right. They would have been on a whole new currency. Africa would have been rich overnight. Right. That's what Gaddafi was trying to do. All of a sudden, Gaddafi's a war criminal. Look how they hunt that man down the street and killed him and took his gold. But you never knew it was about that. Are you seeing what I'm saying? You got to understand that what's running the world is not these politicians. It's families. It's banking families that run this world. Oh, can y'all please, 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 please come up and you're thanking God. It's banking families. Number one is the Rothschilds. They said that this, these people's wealth is probably... They don't even know, but they, they estimated 500 trillion. Do y'all understand that number? No, it's just too much to even understand. Did you know that's half the world's wealth? It's owned by one family. If I was Satan, that'd be the family I would control. Then, then, then can you get the one? You get to understand that this family he's given. Listen to me close now. Remember the flood of Noah. God destroyed the world because the, the, uh, the men had begun to receive knowledge from the fallen angels. The Bible says the fallen angels in Genesis 6 came and had sex with daughters of men and began to teach them these, these secrets, occultic secrets, that, which is really demon understanding. God didn't want that in the earth, so he destroyed all the world to get rid of this Nephilim, this, this offspring of angels having sex with people. And then these angels gave them the, this, this hidden knowledge. Y'all got what I'm saying? That hidden knowledge didn't die. It just kept going down to different people. We called it the occult. It was, it was the same mystery religions of Babylon. It was the same, what in Egypt, it was the same thing that the Egyptians was operating out of. That's why Egypt was able to do what they were doing. They were operating with supernatural demonic knowledge. The, don't think the Egyptians was good. They wasn't. They was evil. The same way in, in, the, in South America, the Mayans, the Incans, these people were operating with supernatural demonic knowledge. That's how they were able to build this stuff, and they can't figure out how they built it. Y'all got what I'm saying? That's why they was cutting people's hearts out, worshiping these demons, these fallen angels, because they had to keep appeasing these demons in order to get this knowledge. Come on, y'all. What that same knowledge of the occult, what does that mean? Of, of, these, of these inventions and ideas, the things that you think are new, was already there before. So, so, so all that happens is these, these families are, are given this secret knowledge that passes down, and they begin to learn how to manipulate through demonic knowledge the world to gain all the wealth and stuff. That's, that's, what, that's what they've done. They call it the occult, but it's just it's the same fallen wisdom that, 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 that they had before God flooded the world. Do y'all got that part? So this is what these families are operating out of. Oh, God. It's hard to teach church folk now. I think I need an organ. We got to have some excitement to learn. I'm trying to teach you. This is, now, these same families are, 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 are connected through bloodlines. That's why, they, matter of fact, they interbreed. Because they got to have the same bloodline. As a matter of fact, I found out a, a, a good thing that most of these families and elites have this rare blood called RH negative. I just found that out the other day. But these families, they, 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 they work through bloodlines. And if you're part of that bloodline, then you, you're part of that family, then because of this covenant that their forefathers have made with Satan, that they will sell their souls a life to Satan if for all the wealth. And he's giving them the wealth, and he don't care. He give you all the wealth. He give, he give them everything they're asking for. And they, now, they don't believe they're going to hell. They're deceived. Like, Satan can't use you till he deceive you. He deceived them to think that they're going to be reigning or something with him. or He really making them think they're going to actually fight the creator God and win. 
Do you not know what Satan is doing? He's building an army to fight. The battle of Armageddon is talking about there's an army of 200 million in the valley of the ghetto. And the Bible says that the lamb is coming and he destroys him by the brightness of his coming. The sword of his mouth just wipes him out. Why? Because he's building an army to fight the lamb. Satan still believes that he's going to fight against God and win. So he's building an army. An army with his DNA. It's called the seed of the serpent. Oh, y'all not ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. Are y'all there? The seed of the serpent is the same thing when, 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 when Jesus, I mean, when uh, God told Eve, uh, that, uh, told the serpent that, 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 that this woman's seed is going to bruise your heel. But your, your seed is going to be biting, going to be, I mean, going to bruise your head, your seed is going to be biting at the heel. See, see, there's a seed of the woman, which is real human beings. Then there's a seed of the serpent, which is, which is demon DNA or, 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 or DNA mixed with the Nephilim. Oh, I ain't got time to tell y'all this. But the Bible says that in the last days, weeds and wheat, sheep and goats. In other words, it's too deep for me to get into this. I, see, I hate doing this on Sunday because Wednesday I can do it because I know people are more adept. But Sunday I hate to lose folk. But y'all going to have to understand it. Just, just learn to study. <laughs> learn to study. Amen. It ain't all about insp trying to inspire you to shout. And say, I'm trying to get your mind to understand what you watching on TV. You looking at it and don't know what you looking at. Yeah. All these movies about splicing and DNA and transhumanism. And you don't know what this, what does this mean? Yeah. They're getting in your head that there's the man's going to evolve. Yeah. And they're going to they're gonna kill or destroy the folks that are against their evolution. Wow. I wonder who those people are. Wow. Those are the people that know this ain't right. <laughs> the Bible says they're going to they gonna persecute us. Yeah. Why? Because we're going to be standing in the way of their evolution. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, how can I get y'all to understand what I'm trying to say? Okay, let me, let me get back. Let me get back. Let me catch myself up. Now, so... The seed, of, the seed of the serpent is what we're going to see at the last days. Now, the seed of the serpent, see, Satan hates humans, human beings, because we were created in God's image and likeness. Satan is creating the world in his image and his likeness. This is why he's trying, the Bible talks about how when this Antichrist comes to power, there will be death like you have never seen before. He starts a killing campaign to kill the humans. And everybody that's not in allegiance with him. Right? Why? Because he's building another people. Now every movie has told you this and you're missing it. If you remember Lord of the Rings, that was the whole point of the movie. That this evil wizard was building an army that was somehow, are they always underground? They come out of the under the ground. These movies are telling you what's going, what's, uh, uh, are y'all there? He's building an army. It's, and, he, and, and listen, this is not a, a, a normal human army. It's not going to be a human army. It's going to be a demonic army. Probably, I, I believe it's going to be like hybrids, mixed, like a mixture of people and, 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 and demons or something. Are y'all there? Why? Because the Bible says, now, the Lord Jesus Christ could destroy men easily. Wouldn't be no problem. But this army was so wicked that after Jesus, after the God had judged the earth, they were still like this. We ain't vowing to you. That's not a normal man. That's, that's beings that can't be saved. So I'm going deeper than what I want to go here. Listen to me. Did you understand when the Bible says in the last days, God's going to separate the sheep from the goats? Now, all our life, we have preached that that was people who were saved and those that wasn't saved. Right? Humans that were saved and humans that wasn't saved. But that's not what he's talking about. If you go all the way back to Genesis, there's a seed. That was planted at the same time that 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 that, that, that even Adam sinned. The seed of the serpent. Amen. So there's a serpent seed which came out as Cain. Oh, yeah. What 
Cain was mort. If you study the life of Cain, Cain was the one that came up with music and frilly clothes and sexual immorality. It was Cain. And he seduced the children of Seth, his other brother, to come down off the mountain and defile them. Cain, it was a, it was a, but Cain was the seed of the serpent. And that seed was sown in the earth same way uh, 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 Seth was sown in the earth. So there's a good race of people, bad race. I don't know how I can even get deeper into this. Are y'all, are y'all, I'm trying to get y'all to understand something. As we get closer to this time, you're going to see the children of Cain. They're already showing who they are. The Bible calls them the children of pride. God can redeem us from anything but pride. Pride says I don't need redemption. So how can people be saved and, be, and, and, and have sex with men? How can men have sex with men and be saved when they must confess that as sin to God? But, but this ain't wrong. So if this ain't wrong, then I don't need your forgiveness. If I don't need your forgiveness, then how can I be saved? Instead of, not, not only is this not wrong, but we're going to get in the street and parade this. And I'm a pride. Pride. They are the children of pride. It's the seed of the serpent. If I can go further deeper, and I'm going to go deep, I'm going to go real deep on y'all, right? It's going to be so deep, it's gonna, you, ain't, you ain't never heard it before. I'm going to go real deep. <laughs> That's why they're full of snake spirits. They're full of snakes. Are y'all, can y'all handle what I'm trying to tell y'all? I'm trying to, I'm, I'm just, look, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying, my goal is to mess you up a little bit so you can go study what I'm trying to tell you. That there is a people that as we get closer and closer, ain't going to be no, it's going to be easy to tell who's who. Now listen, the Bible says that a good man sowed, Jesus was teaching a parable, a good man sowed seed in his field. While men slept, the enemy came in and sowed weeds amongst the wheat. When they woke up, the servant said, let's go out here and, and, and pull up the weeds. And, and, and Jesus said, no, don't pull them up. You got to let them grow up. Why? Now, why? Because I taught this before that when wheat and weeds are small, they look the same. He told them, don't pull up the weeds unless you hurt the wheat. So you don't know what's weeds and what's wheat. Till they grow up. So at the last days, you start seeing what's weeds and what's wheat. Right now, they growing up together. We look alike. But in the last days, we're going to start being distinguished. Let's, put, let's, let's go better. The system, the world system, is created for weeds. It caters the weeds. Weeds flourish in that system. It's not created for wheat. So because the whole system's created for weeds, if you listen, if you if you if you if you plant a whole field of wheat and weeds come up, eventually you're gonna say these are weeds in my wheat. Right? You'll be able to distinguish the weeds from the wheat because you got more wheat, you got more wheat, and you see that what wheat look right. As it gets dark and people fall away, and everything becomes a weed, you're going to begin to see wheat. We'll stick out. Even now we're sticking out. You don't even know why people don't like you. you you're sticking out. But if you was a weed, if you was a weed with 18 purses and 16 tattoos on your neck, you fit in. If you had every kind of sexual deviancy, in, it, you fit in. If you were rebellious, ain't about to tell you nothing, you'd fit in. If you were slutty and whorish, you'd fit in. I'm trying to tell y'all why you're going to start distinguishing between the weeds and the wheat. But when you stand out, it's because you're wheat. And you don't fit with that.
Now, what you don't understand is Pinocchio will always try to be a real boy. So you got weeds masquerading as wheat. And we don't understand it because the weeds are saying what we're saying. They dancing like we're dancing, shout like we're shouting, singing like we're singing, but something just don't look right. But yet, they look, they got it all like us. But as we get closer to our Christ coming, our dance is going to change. Our shout is going to change. The words are going to change. And you'll be able to, in, the way we look going to change. And you'll be able to distinguish weeds and wheat. Oh, yes. Are y'all there or not there? So Satan's arm is going to be an army of weeds. I, I, you know, I didn't think this before because, you know, you, you hate to think that God knew this. But there are people that are going to hell. There are people that were, that were destined to be a weed. That was their destiny. In other, now, if you don't believe me, how could Lucifer, who's now Satan, stand in the presence of God, all the glory and majesty and know all the mysteries and wonders, and still turn against God? with all of this power. So don't tell me if he can, and who are you, and you don't even see God. God knew no matter what, this soul going to make choices. They choose, they're going to choose against me every time. And these are the ones that won't only take the mark, because the mark is not going to, listen y'all, the mark of the beast ain't going to be a fearful thing. The mark is going to be convenience. Let me tell you who's helped bring the mark. Google. People are going to take the mark for convenience. They're going to market the mark of the beast. I'm going to show you how you want to tell you how they're going to market. They're going to market it as convenience. Well, see, with this mark, you, 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 don't even need, you, don't need, you don't need no computer. You can download email right in your mind. Or you can download it right in your... See, it's going to be that type of mark. This is going to open. You don't even need no car keys. You can just wave your hand on your car. Car start and open. You ain't got to lock your doors. You just wave your hand, your door lock. It's going to be, matter of fact, I heard a woman from Google say it's going to be like a superpower. She, they, they, Google has developed pills that you can swallow that will cause your body to become a signal that you don't need no passwords because when you show up, your body will transmit the password, open up everything. They call it a superpower. So the mark won't be marketed like evil, it'll be marketed as convenience. Once enough people accept it, then people are going to be, there's going to be some holdouts, like me, by the grace of God. They're going to be holding out. They're going to force it on impact type people. Why ain't pastors preaching this? Because their people are not prepared for this. They're not prepared to go through anything. They want you to think everything is going to get better. No, the world doesn't get better. All y'all kids, you kids need to know this. The world won't get better. It's going to get worse and darker and darker and darker and darker Amen. until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. But this doesn't preach well. But the mark of the beast is not going to be a, it's, going, it's not going to be, it's going to be deceptive, but it's not going to be like a fearful thing at first. Most people are going to line up for it. The same way people line up for EBT. They're going to get y'all first. They're going to get the prisoners in jail. They're going to make them because they ain't got no rights. They're going to they gonna, they gonna, they gonna chip them. They're going to chip everybody who's on this government system. It'd be like some of your medical records would be in it. That's, the, that's what it's going to be like. It ain't going to be, it ain't, and trust me, it ain't going to be no scary mark. It's going to be like all, we're gonna, all your medical records going to be in this. But then they're not going to tell you, but that mark going to have some type of technology to, matter of fact, this is what I really heard about this, this chip. They said this mark going to have a, a, a type of technology that if, that if you don't, 
If you get out of line, they can cut off your chip and kill you. That's the type of totalitarian control the Bible's talking about in the last days that you're going to have to, what would make men bow down and worship this statue? The Bible talks about a statue is going to be built, an image of this beast. It's dragging. We, people are going to have to bow down and worship this. What would make men do that? Total, they're going to be under total control. Total control. And if they don't, they cut your chip off and cut you off. I figured the chip might have a little explosive in it. You know, I was, you know how your mind just goes to think. I can, you, I can think up some stuff. I said, well, maybe there'll be a bomb in it. And, you know, if it's in people's head, it's a bomb in it. They blow your head off. And <laughs> they disagree with the government, blow his head off. But this is the type of totalitarian. Now, the problem, and this, this is what I'm trying to show you. The problem is you keep getting shown these movies of this dystopian future so you don't resist. It's almost like we just accepted it. Like this is our future. This is what's going to happen. So it's already in your psyche to accept it. Are you there? So this is what's coming. And you've been programmed to accept it. Why? Because you love your life too much. Real Christians don't love their life too. We know that we know better. We know that loving this life too much will make us deny our Christ. Oh, y'all ain't ready for that. We know that. We can't be so in love. That's why. What? Is, what? Is, what? Is, what? About tell you, love not the world or nothing in the world. He that loved the world is an enemy of God. You can't love your life that much. You can't love this world. You can't love worldly. You can't love cars and clothes and pride and prestige and honor. All this things the world gives you. You can't love it. Because if you love it, you're going to love it more than you love Christ. And I don't know how we skip over these scriptures to tell us that we might have to come face to face with making a decision. How many people are ready for that? See, I, so listen, y'all. I'm going to be real. I preach the way I do because I live with that on my mind all the time. Today, I might have to make, they might look on the news one day and say, look, if you're Christian, come over here. If you hate, come over here. Take you somewhere and say, no, nah, you know, you believe. Now, they're doing it in Muslim countries already. We just don't see it. But you might have to make a decision. Let me help y'all. Every one of y'all going to have to make a strong decision to get out of here. This is what church ain't being taught. Matter of fact, we've been, let, let, let me help you. We've been taught you're going to be raptured out. I've been, I heard it all, and I'm saying, well, Lord, you about behind because stuff's happening. We already in some seals are being opened, and where's the rap? I'm waiting. To, come on now. Get us out. But if that was true, then what, who's he talking to when he's saying, if you be killed with the sword, with the sword you will be killed? Who he talking to? Who's he talking to? These people ain't supposed to be here, the ones that he's talking to. Because I heard once we wrapped it out, ain't going to be none here but sinners. Yeah. Well, then who is he, who's he talking to? If you go into prison, into captivity, into captivity, you will go. If you be killed with this world, with this world you will be, be killed. Yeah. But he that endure to the end shall be saved. Yeah. Love not your life unto death. Who's he talking to? Yeah. If we all going to escape, who is he talking to? Why he tell us? What do we need armor for? What's, what, what is the purpose of being a soldier? To run. What's the purpose of being a soldier? To run. If he's telling me he who overcomes shall be saved, then, then what am I going to overcome? He wrote revelations to people who are going to be there to see it. Let me go further. I don't even know how I got on this, but let me go further. I just feel this. I, I, this is this, 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 this commitment to Christ. If he don't fix your marriage, what you going to do? If he don't get you out, if he don't give you a house, if he don't give you a job, if he don't give you no money, if he don't, if he don't do it, what you going to do? I ain't serving God predicate on what he do or don't do. He's done enough. He gave me eternal life. I accept eternal life. If I don't get nothing else, that's good enough. Ain't no commitment to Christ serving him because he will give you. What if he don't do it? 
What if as happy, what if your happiness now is all the happiness you're gonna ever have? You're gonna backslide on God? What if you don't never get married? You're gonna leave him? What if your marriage don't never get better? What you going to do? What's the alternative? Either he's worthy or he ain't. I mean, we need some real devotion to Christ. Commitment to him. But this daggone lottery gospel, that's what it is. Got us believe God always... You know, get something from God to, to love him it didn't produce a, 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 a bunch of strong soldiers but it produced spoiled children that if they don't get their way I'm leaving I quit I'm going back to the world I'm calling my boyfriend I'm getting me a drink I'm going to cuss you out I'm going to backslide I can't take it no more. But those that, that are committed to him, we follow the lamb wherever he leads. And I'm wise enough to know he ain't going to always leave me where I want to go. He going to take me to some places that destroy some of my flesh. Destroy my old ways and mess up my mind a little bit so I'll start thinking like him. How are we going to get out of here? How? I was alluding to a point. Let me close. I was alluding to a point. Yeah, I'm closing. But I was alluding to a point. Remember Jesus was talking to Peter. They was having a conversation. And Peter was saying something. I can't really remember the whole thing now. But Peter was, they were talking about something about Peter in the future. And Jesus told Peter, yeah, there are going to be some men lead you out. Jesus told him, I'm going to tell you how you're going to die. <laughs> you're, going to, this, you're going to die for me. Did you know that? Peter, did you know you're going to die for me? All the apostles signed up knowing that. After Jesus rose from the dead, they all understood that this is the, this is the temptation we're going to have to be tested with. They knew that. All, that's why all of them died. They were martyred. Most of them were martyred. And this is the problem with the modern church. We have been programmed and conditioned to, the Bible says, if you love your life, you lose your life. We have been conditioned to love this life. We love, we love it so much we want to get all of the world and, of, and we want to get all of, the, of God. And it doesn't work because two are going to fight against each other. And when you really get that way, people start saying something wrong with you. Something wrong with you because you're starting to understand that, wait a minute, I just won't be. See, I see, you know, when you really grow in God and you grow up, you be like, no, 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 I just want to be saved. I, you know, if I never preached a thousand, I just want to be saved. See, you start, my, my, even when I go to God, my list of prayer, I don't even ask for much no more. Just thank them, Lord, thank you that I'm saved. I just want to be saved. Because I understand that's what it comes down to. Yeah. On your deathbed, you ain't going to be talking about no car, no nothing. You're going to be thinking about, Lord, I want to be right with you. Yeah. That's all it's about. And oh, how Satan gets us to waste our time with distractions. Yeah. Focused on trying to get ahead and get on top and get this money and get this out. And, get, and all this stuff you're getting takes your, weight, takes your focus off of him. The Bible says that Mary and Martha... Here's Jesus in the house. Mary is Martha's busy working for God. To the point she, she's mad at Mary because Mary's sitting at the feet of the master, understanding this is where you need to be. Yeah. Jesus said, man, look, Martha, what Mary doing ain't going to be taken away from her. She's doing the right thing. You worry, you're busy, Martha. This is what Satan do. If he can't stop you from knowing Christ, he'll make you so busy that you won't even be able to enjoy a relationship with him. It's coming down to the rela oh y'all I gotta close I'm, I gotta close. It's coming down to a relationship. I live my life this way. I said, Lord, I said, I said, you know, 
I understand, as, as, as I start, you know, growing up in God, I start understanding why he didn't allow me to do certain things and be around certain people and go in certain cliques and clubs and stuff. I knew why. Because I would have been that way. But he called me for this last day generation to preach to these last day folks who are so hard and so deep in sin that they need somebody just to take a, 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 a axe and chop them out of it. And that's what type of preaching that people need now. And that's why you keep lollygagging, playing around with this hocus-pocus preaching, this little, go, ain't challenging you, and you ain't coming up, and you ain't growing, but you just feeling good and getting your conscience cleansed, but you don't know up ahead, you're going you gonna, you gonna to have to have been tough and trained for what's coming. I said tough and trained. It's, come, I don't know how else to say it. I'm not just trying to scare you. I don't even want to talk about this stuff sometimes because I, I see it coming. It's coming. All the signs are saying it's coming. Even now CNN and Fox News is telling you America's going to collapse. Everybody's saying it. But we still, but the Bible said be just like in the days of Noah. They were marrying and having a ball and giving in marriage. Wasn't paying attention to the, the fact that Noah's screaming, it's coming. The rain's coming. And they having a ball, just, just getting, going to parties and, 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 and football games. And, and they building more saloons and bars to go walk around the waterfront. And that's all we, and we think it because you see all of this, all this stuff going on that ain't nothing coming. But the Bible says up until the day, up until the day, they was partying up until the day. That, that God shut the door and then here come the rain. It's coming. It's, and ain't going to be no, ain't going to be nothing more important than am I right with Jesus Christ. It's coming. Last thing and I'm done. I know I got to close. Last thing, I want to I help you real quick. I just want to help you real quick. I want to give you just a little bit of understanding about what's coming. No matter who's in power, no matter who's in charge, no matter Democrat, Republican, no matter what president, it don't matter anymore. We've hit the point of no return. Yes. Yes. They're lying about our debt. They're saying the debt of America is 16 trillion. That's a lie. Real estimates are 70 something trillion. I think it was, uh, if, I if I'm correct, every man, woman, boy, and girl in America owes $150,000. Children ain't even born yet old. Because as you know, when your country's in debt, you in debt. You're a citizen of that country, you took on the debt of the country. Do you know what they mortgage to borrow money? You. The people are mortgaged. So now the people that, 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 owe, that America owes money to feel like it's going to collect on the debt. Well, what's the collateral? You. So they got this thing called Agenda, Agenda 21, which is collecting all the people and place, putting them in small cities and, 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 and freeing up vast land of where ain't going to be nobody living, but all the cities are going to be congested because they're trying to put everybody in the city to manage you. Now, I know we don't think that can happen, but it's happening. It's here now. As a matter of fact, the last projection I heard from a top economist said that we have maybe one year before this economy totally implodes. This is why Russia's getting out of the dollars. Everybody's dumping our dollars because they know the dollars get ready to fall. Once that dollar fall, the Bible says a loaf of bread will be worth how much? What did the Bible say? A, a day's wages for one loaf of bread. That's called hyperinflation. They, the, the only reason we don't have it now is because the feds have turned on that print machine and they print money trying to, keep the, trying to keep the hyperinflation from coming. But what happens when you keep printing money, you make the money less. So that means... What was once one dollar is three dollars, cause the dollar ain't the dollar ain't worth as much as it was. Why? Cause you turned on the machine and you're printing money out of thin air. Once it falls, listen to me. Once it falls, every government system gonna fall at once. Every social security, every welfare, EBT, everything's going at one time. Then they're gonna declare martial law. Martial law is when the man on top, whatever president be, his word is going to be like a king and dictator. Whatever he say going to have to go. They're going to lock down cities. They've been training to do it. All this stuff is just training to do this stuff. I'm trying to help y'all. Yeah, you need to be scared. Yeah, you need to, because you need to get your soul right. 
Stop thinking so cornerly. It's coming. I know we don't know. I know we don't believe it, but it's going to happen whether you believe it or not. I want you to know when you see it coming that it's coming. As a matter of fact, they said they're waiting on one big disaster. I've never heard this before. They, the, 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 they, the, the government has said we're waiting on one big disaster. That's enough to go and knock us over into martial law. It's coming. It's coming. Look at your food. Look, 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 at, your, look at your supermarkets. You, are you that blind? You don't see this food is going up and you can't figure out what? Wait a minute. Me and my wife went to the store today. We bought a meal for me and her just at the store. It was $80. I said, what? What's $80? What did we get her? Okay, I know it's some steak, but that steak ain't that much. You get like two bags. Can't figure out what you got. But this is how you are. This is what's keeping you receiving the program because it's not happening real quick. It's just the slowly, slowly, little bit by little bit. And, that's, and these things are happening. They're taking your freedoms away. Taking your freedom. If you don't believe it, I'm telling you, you should be able to get on the plane and go where you want to. Now it's almost like Beirut trying to go somewhere. And because we don't know what's coming, most people are going to be caught off guard. I'm telling you, I really believe. I believe what they said is about a year. I believe that. And once the economy falls, you're going to have millions of people that don't know how to grow nothing, don't know how to do nothing other than go to work and get a check. They don't know how to be resourceful. They've been dumbed down to take care of themselves. They don't know what, how to deal with water. They don't know how to deal with food. They don't know. It's going to be chaos. The Bible predicts this is going to happen. And you better be worried when the, when, when, when the news starts agreeing with the Bible. That's when you know something wrong. They'll never agree with God, but they know what's coming. I'm closing right here. I know I said I was closing three times. But y'all need this. It's one of them messages. It's one of them get right. Get right messages. Get right before it's too late. <laughs> Go to Revelations. I'm going to close with this scripture. Now we need this. Amen. Get right. Okay, go over here to uh, Revelation 6 and 6. Six and eight. Y'all there? Yeah. Y'all there? Yeah. And I looked and behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death. And hell followed him. And power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death, with the beasts of the field and with the beasts of the earth. Are y'all there? And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Who is he talking about? It's reality. Who is he talking about? These are the raptured folk? Talking about those that was alive and was naming the name of Jesus Christ and wouldn't deny him. They were slain. Uh, See, that's why I wanted to ask, do you really want to be saved? Do you really want to be saved? Are y'all there or not there? Are y'all seeing that or not seeing that? And they're crying, saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Those souls are saying, God, get them. The ones that killed us. <laughs> He's talking about Christians who holding the testimony of Jesus? We are. 
But for some reason, these passages go unnoticed. Nobody seemed to preach this stuff. And I'm saying, well, who's he talking about? Why is he, why is he saying, why, who, who is he talking about when, when he said uh, men are going to kill you and think they're doing God a favor? Who is he talking about? They're going to offer you up to prisons and stuff. Who is he talking about? He's talking about the followers of Christ. And if you don't believe that you're going to go through anything, you won't be prepared to go through nothing. But he is worthy. I have driven this in my heart that he is worthy. But if you're so full of this world, you'll never give up this world. If you're so full of trying to be, you'll never give it up. You can never, you will never be able to deny this world if you, if you, if you, if you're so full of it. But when you live your life with that blessed hope, always understand that this world is not my home, but I'm going to a city not made with hands. To understand that He is worthy, that if that time was to come. I want to be found with courage. I want to be like Paul. Paul was almost wanting to die. He said, man, look, I want to go on and be with Christ, but I'm only here for your sake. But I really would rather go on and be. What type of faith is that? That's great faith. And I'm afraid that many of us are going to be shocked that it came down to a point that we had to make a decision for God. And if you don't believe me, you got to make a decision now. Yes. Every day at work, you got to decide, are you going to be with this homosexual stuff? Or are you going to do stand with the word? Every day, you got to decide, I'm going to let my children believe this, or I'm not going to let them believe it. Every day, you got to decide, am I going to shut my mouth, or am I going to open up and say who I belong to? Every day, you got to decide now. So I thank God for the courage he put in me. That he called me for this last hour to be a testimony. And whatever way he can get the most glory out of me, let it be. And some glory comes as a martyr, baby. Some glory comes when you have to lay down your life. I bet you we weed out the weeds then. Won't be one weed then. Won't be one weed in church when that happens. You'll find out everybody who's really saved. And weeds and ghosts going to get up quick. Oh, excuse me. This is not for me. But when those of us know in our heart that this, that, 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 I don't know how people could do it if they can't see it. That's why I thank God for his spirit. When I pray and when I worship God, I can see it. I can see it. When I see it in his word, his word will make you see it. All of a sudden you will see that blessed hope and you'll realize, man, ain't nothing, ain't nothing worth missing this. You'll find out that you was a pilgrim here, passing through. God in his mercy gave you a span of time, a span of time to know who he was. And that's all this life is. And when you start living like that, man, you get a boldness in you. You know, what, what, what can you do to me? What can you, when I'm right with God, what can you do to me? And I would encourage you, if you don't know him like that, oh, it's time to know him like that. It's time to know him like that. The problem is we keep coming asking God to do stuff and fix things. But we don't want him. And if he fix what you ask him to fix and you don't get him, that thing will be broke again. But if you get him, that thing will stay fixed. So, Lord, I give you me. I give you my life. It's the best trade I've ever made in my life. The best thing I've ever done. This has been a hard life, Lord. Living for you was not easy. But it's the best trade. To live with the assurance that hell is not my home. To live with the blessed assurance that if I was to die, 
then I know I will stand before you to know the God of the universe, the great creator God, to be counted worthy to ride with you in this final battle when you finally put your enemies under your feet, to be counted worthy for that. What can this world offer me over that? That you're going to show me the mysteries. When, what can this world offer me? There's galaxies. There's places that you have. You said there's places in you we know nothing of. I can't trade all of what I hope to gain in you for this temporary thing down here. It's just not worth it. Stand on your feet. Son, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At these times when you really understand the mercies of God, that, oh, if you'd have let me die in my sin, I was as ignorant as I wanted to be. Well, what if I died? What if, while I was out there drunk driving, what if that would have been my last day? Out there thinking I'm tough. People pulling guns and we're pulling guns and shooting and robbing and acting a fool. I could at any given time. How, 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 how fragile was my life? He could have let you die in the last argument with the last man. Look at how good women are getting killed by these men. This crazy stuff. Is, that could have been you. But him and his mercy. That he loved me enough to say I'm not going to let you die before you know the truth. The fire. And when I look at my life now, no, you know, people look at me and my wife and we tell them, no, we ain't got what we, we ain't got a lot of stuff. We don't care about stuff. We ain't got no, we ain't got no beautiful home and we ain't got no beautiful car and we have nice something that I feel is nice, but it ain't all that. We ain't got a bunch of jewelry and got a bunch of clothes. And, When I look at my children and I see that he, he, get, he didn't even owe me that. He allowed me to see these children grow up. He didn't owe me that. But he gave it to me. How worthy is this God we serve? He's better than you deserve better than you deserve. Hallelujah. Come on, bow your head. Lord, I thank you. My heart is overwhelmed with you. I'm just so glad you didn't leave me where I was. I'm so glad that you brought me into truth. And Lord, there's a price for this truth. We have to suffer for the truth that we receive. But Father, it's worth it. Nothing in this world is worth it. I, there was times in my life I didn't know if I would take a million dollars over you. I don't know. I probably would years ago. I didn't know enough. But you brought me through so much. I know ain't nothing, ain't no amount. Because I start to get a glimpse of eternal life. And as I get old and this life gets hard and this body starts to break down and I realize this body becomes my prison. I start looking for the day that I can lay this thing down and get a new glorified body. I can run with you and talk to you and run in your heaven and fly with you and walk with you and see the streets of gold and the tree of life and the river flowing down the middle of the, of the road. That I can see the saints that went before me and I can see what you built for me, the mansion and the body that you have had for me. And, and I begin to long for that place that they call heaven. And I begin to divorce from the world and I begin to tell the world there's nothing in you that I want. I found a new lover and his name is Jesus. So Lord, I give you my life. Whatever you want to do with me, Lord, do it with me. Lord, I love my children, but if they don't serve you, I can't make them serve you. But if, 
All I can offer myself, all I can offer you is myself. Come on, we're going to pray. If you want to pray with me this morning, just say, Lord, I give you my life. Come on, we're going to pray. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Some of y'all, you're going to see me in heaven. I can't wait. We're going to rejoice and embrace. I'm going to thank the Lord I met you. You're going to thank the Lord you met me. As you walk with God, that's what it becomes about. This world gets weak and you start to see the foolishness and the falseness of it. The fakeness of it. If you do nothing as a parent, teach your child the fakeness of this world. So they won't get caught up in loving. Come on, lift your hands. Let's pray. Father, we come to you humbly as we know how. We just coming to you because our heart is overwhelmed. Our heart is just overwhelmed, God. As we think back on all the things you brought us out of, how, we don't even know how we're standing here today. Many of us shouldn't even be here. We should be dead right now or rotting in some prison, but somehow by your grace and your mercy you allowed us to stand here Lord God we are overwhelmed just by your love knowing that you loved us this much that you didn't leave us where you found us Father we just ask you right now to have your way in, in our life come into our life and have your way be Lord of my life I can't fix one thing Everything I've tried to fix, i messed it up. But you are the great physician. Lord, fix it for me. All I'll do is give you the praise and serve you. But Lord, fix it for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's make sure we're saved. Say, Father, I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I ask you, come into my heart, come into my life, be my Lord, my Savior, my Master. I believe that you died for me, that you rose for me, and you intercede for me. And by my confession, I'm saved. I believe that my name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And when I die, I'll stand before you. I thank you. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for, for remembering me. I thank you for calling me out of my mess. And I believe you're going to keep me. You're going to keep me until you return. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Listen, the Lord, this, this type of anointing is a healing anointing. You just sense a healing flow where God is just starts to deal with deep pain and deep wounds. And this is what you're sensing this morning. You got to learn just to receive it. You know, God has got his hand on something in your life. He wants to bring healing to that area. Even when I was preaching, even before in the beginning when I was talking about that praise in you, that people don't know how to let it go. They still want to hold it. Sometimes God just wants you to release that. Quit trying to hold back the adoration you have for him. That's him moving in you. That's the power of the Holy Ghost that's moving in your heart now. Just allow God to do what he wants to do. He'll show you something if you allow him. He'll show you what he wants to fix, things that are out of place. He'll show you how to get those things back in place. He'll do that if you allow him to do it. Father, we love you and we thank you for your word and what you've done in us this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, hook somebody.